Judy from Witch Peacecraft, welcome. It's the 2nd of April. I thought I'd do a bit of a review on what I finished up doing towards the end of March that I haven't shown you yet. Because I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. I think I got a little carried away. <laughs> anyway, I have a gift that I won from a giveaway to share with you and some finished objects and maybe ask you for some suggestions. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, I was really surprised when my name came out in the drawer for a surprise birthday giveaway gift. It was on Soxy Nana's channel where I had commented and she was giving away two patterns to two different, one, one pattern per designer. So the first person out got the first choice of which of the designers they want and the second person got was let the second choice and I was second to come out so I chose a pattern I really love winning patterns I think it's a great idea so I um, won a pattern I could pick any pattern on Ravelry from a bunny muff I think that's what she's called on Ravelry bunny muff um, and I'll put a link to her in the um, description below and Soxy and Anna. I thank her, Alice greatly for my name coming out in the random comment picker. It was just awesome. I haven't won anything for a long time. Um, so yes, I went through Bunny Muff's um, patterns. I went through both of them. I just had to wait for the other lady to s decide. And I did like both designers, but I did really want Bunny Muff because she had two patterns in there. That I really thought I could give a go so I did get bunny muff and I picked a pattern so surprise surprise the be cozy restoring normality so it is a tea cozy but it's very different to what I've ever done and it is knitting and very detailed graph um, carrying yarn it's going to really test my skills or improve my knitting skills let's see if i can show you there without showing the chart there it is there so it slips completely over the teapot like the old um, sewn tea cozies were it has the bee on the front and you know i love gardening and i love bees so there was two but this was the one i picked and yeah the idea being this year um, there's still the Gordon Bell Museum Tea Cozy competition in July, end of July. I didn't enter last year, I entered a couple of years before uh, when they were looking for numbers. And I thought if I do a good enough job, I might enter this one. There's also the middle of July is what we call the Cairns Royal Show, which they have a craft fair section. And I do want to enter this year. Um, I've had lots of people over the years say why don't you enter and I'm, I can't be bothered I never plan anything but this year I've actually planned I've got some yarn coming from Wool Warehouse for a project so when that arrives I'll share that with you and if this turns out really well this could be in the um, Ken show rather than the Tea Cozy competition because I will make other ones for that I do have another one in mind that I'm going to make that probably will go to the tea cozy competition but anyway there is a chart there's how to do it I'm hoping I can do it so as you can see it looks stunning in the blue and gold and I did check yarn sub for a substitute yarn that I could use because it's a eight ply or DK weight now I don't have blue I do have this which is Ella Ray Eco Tweed um, and it is ochre, the colour ochre um, I'm trying to see 75% merino 25% polyamide I used this in, um, some of this in the Stephen West blanket and I didn't really like it in that but I think it'll be fine for the tea cosy it's a good three three way eight ply so that's the colour for the B my problem is I don't have navy, but I do have Shepherd Peridale 8 ply pure wool. And I have 250 gram wools in that colour. So I was thinking of doing that or 
should I go out and buy some blue and do it in the blue and gold? Let me know in the comments what you think below. Is that enough of a contrast? It doesn't have a colour name. It's more like a, it's a, it's a good um, match as far as the eight plies go for that yarn, for the Ella Ray yarn. But what do you think? Should I go and get a blue or should I just use my yarn stock and use this colour as a contrast? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you once again, Alice at Soxy Nana. There'll be a link to her channel. Um, she had a Ravelry giveaway uh, make-along that I joined in and had a lot of fun. I've almost finished the second project that I put in that. So when I finish knitting that, I'll share that with you. So that was my giveaway gift twin that I was really excited about. I just couldn't believe my name came out. So during the Easter end of um, March, I disappeared down a rabbit hole. Of course, you're going to make some rabbits, I guess, for Easter. Not something I usually do. But I did see Buddy Bunny, this by Craftably ever after she does the buddy bear and then i saw her buddy bunny this one um, i'll link her youtube channel and uh, because she does do tutorials as well it's just easier than linking her blog don't know if you can see him there so i made one except i made it in pink and i gave him a bow tie Ta -da! i just felt all in pink like that he was just a bit naked. He needed something to dress him up. And yes, he's got a bow tie. That's why I, I say he's a pink he, not a, a she. But yeah, it turned out really well. I do like her buddy bear and bunny bunny. They make, they're quick to whip up and they do make really good um, items for sale on my craft store. I've sold a few. So the next one was, of course, to try, try Joe's Webb's Leggy Bunny. Now, I don't use the blanket yarn or the heavy yarn. I'm, I'm giving it a go. I'll probably do a review on how I feel about the different ones I've used. But I did do it in four weight, which you can do. But in mine looks a bit funny. But ah, his bow tie's a bit crooked. There's my Leggy Bunny da -da, with his tail. Her, her tutorials are easy to follow and she does sell the pattern on Etsy. But make sure you check out Joe's web. It's been laid around, squished up. That's why his bow tie is a bit crooked. But there you go. I will straighten it up. But he'll go on sale on my craft market table. But yes, I made a leaky bunny. And then one day, I think I was at Crochet for Cancer meeting and Ulia suggested... The Chubby Bunny tutorial and she sent me the link after the meeting and I decided I'd give it a go. Also I'd been learning about the, my market table that it often helps to brand in the colours of your logo which mine are purple and gold even though orange is my favourite colour because it was designed years ago but I did have a bit of purple and gold so I made a purple and gold Chubby Bunny I gave him a bit of hair to introduce more gold. This is really easy to make. I don't know if I got the ears quite right, but this is a great tutorial too. And it's a very cute bunny. So he will go in my pocket friends basket on my table. But yeah, purple and gold chubby bunny. So that was my rabbit hole I disappeared down. Eventually, when I came up, I did make other things I won't be a moment I did make other amigurumis now I'm not sure how well I did this was an amigurumi from amigurumi wars last year a free pattern called the dumpling kitty this one and I did really like it and I did remember saving it and I thought well I'll give that a go well I'm not sure mine quite turned out the way it should I should have probably put something in the tail to curl it up maybe I'll fold it up for a while but there it is this is all just made in spotlight um, super saver same um, my chubby bunnies and my, my 
bunny and my leggy bunny were made in Super Saver, but my purple and gold chubby bunny is actually made in um, Karen's Super Soft bit that I had left over. This one is made in um, Spotlight Super Saver, the 10 ply. Look, I do like it, but I just can't get the pores right where they go. What I don't know. It just looks a bit funny to me. But I had a go at making that. So that's another item for my, um, what I call my pocket friends or amigurumis on my table. I made another little octopus because I had some of this scraps. This is um, the octopus I always make on a keychain. Um, because I've come up with, I can't do like, some people do 10 of an item for the charity store. I decided I'd do four four each like I can I can get through four and then I'm tired of making them and I needed a fourth little octopus on a keychain so I made that one and that's also in the print super saver uh, spotlight super saver then I've been watching other channels and they were making these what they call mushy boy and this is the original mushy boy I did the tutorial all the tutorials patterns and everything I'll be in the link before and I put him on a keychain and I actually have made three others on key rings and then I tried something bigger and I used um, leftover is it Ferris wheel lion brands with some spotlight super saver white and I made a bigger one without a keychain for um, my pocket friends to go on my little pocket friends basket so yeah, I quite like the mushy boys, but like I said, four is my limit. I finished up making amigurumi. I tried to make a chicken. I don't know what it is, but I cannot make little chickens. This was my attempt at a chicken. I think it looks a bit funny. It's got the funny beak and the... But this was probably... I had This is my first attempt. I did do a second one. It's actually going somewhere that'll probably end up in their bin. <laughs> it's not great. It's better than this one. But yes, I didn't try to make a little chicken. I think um, there's something about them that doesn't quite work for me. But yes, my chicken. So they were my amigurumis that I did. Um, during the week, I actually did a bod hatter palooza. The cake. The one that came out this week, the others hadn't really set me on fire. But this one is like a copy of the chocolate bonbon beanie, but done in a chunky yarn. And I am using my yarn stock up. I have a drawer of chunky yarn that I want to get rid of. Um, I've had it a long time and I, I don't know if I'll put chunky yarn back in that drawer. Anyway, I decided I would make it. I won't be a moment. There you go. I can't find my big head mail model that it would fit because it's quite big, but that's the one I've made. I'll just take it off. I'm really hot. But I thought I'd show you, made in the chunky yarn. I really like this tutorial. I like the chocolate bonbon. And actually, for someone who's not keen on using chunky yarns, I really like this in the chunky yarn. I used a six millimeter crochet hook and I actually used, if I have the ball band over here, I had two balls of Premier Bloom, 100 gram balls, and I used 111 grams. I have this much left of the second ball, which I'm thinking I'll probably put into an amigurumi unless I make, because it's really soft. I could make a child's beanie or a baby beanie. Um, I'll just put my glasses back on. My hair's a bit of a mess after the hat. You know I don't wear hats. I don't rock hats. But I did like the chunky bloom. Look, it didn't crochet up in this pattern the way it should. But it's still a pretty hat. And, um, yeah, it's a really warm hat. So I don't know if I'll donate that to charity or whether I'll um, put it in my cheap basket to sell. Um, I've had this chunky bloom for a long time. Um, I don't I don't remember it being cheap to buy. The colour is Dahlia and they recommend an 8mm crochet hook and I only used a 6. 
I don't think it really needs an eight. But yeah, it is pretty, I must admit. Lovely and soft. I love Premier Yarns. It's a pity I can't get more of them here. So that was my Bod Hatter Palooza. I actually made a hat in the make-along. I forgot to send Laura a photo though. Because I, I keep looking for my big male chunky head because it'll fit that. Now, it's rare that I get a request from family to make something. But Reeves asked me to make a pin cushion for a friend overseas. She's going back to uni or college to study um, design and fashion. And he said she's a bit of a goth and he wanted it in black. You know, hang on. Won't be a moment. Nothing worse than having hair in your mouth. And it's like he knows I hate crocheting with black. It's really hard on my eyes. But he came up because he said, you know, a pin cushion like your voodoo doll. Now, this is my voodoo doll pin cushion. I made this a while back. It was a gifted pattern from a beautiful subscriber. And I really like making it. And I use it all the time. Even when I come home from work angry, I'm sticking pins in it. And Reeves will say to me, I don't think it was designed for you to jab it. But yes, this is my original. And he said, one like that, but a bit bigger. So the pattern that was gifted me is by Jonas Mathis, Super Gurumi Voodoo Doll. And yes, I did make, uh, well, I really show you a whip. It's a whip. That's it there. I started doing the grey and he went, oh, hang on a minute. I think she'd prefer red. I'll have to ask her. So I'm waiting for him to get back to me so I can do red mouth, the red stitching or grey. I mean... I'm picking the mouth's not hard because it's sewn on and he'll let me know whether she wants red or grey. But that's her pin cushion for her new course at uni. Yes, a black voodoo doll. I did say to him, whichever country you're sending it to, don't put my name on it in case it goes through customs and they want to arrest us. But yes, it's more a goth doll than anything. And um. Uh, this is my ideal shout out time to say hi to Madonna Ballard. I hope you're feeling great and you're still watching us all. I've noticed your name coming up in live, so you're out there watching us when you can. And yes, Madonna, I'm making a goth voodoo doll, which is a bit funny. When I, I talked to my eldest son in London over Easter and I showed him and he just absolutely cracked up. He just said, That's, that'd be typical. Um, and I said to him, I have made some funny things lately. I told him about my uh, budgie smuggling banana. And because he's into politics, he knew who I was talking about. And he got a big laugh of that. So I decided I needed to finish things. I started this charity blanket during the floods when we had no power. I managed to get some blue yarns out and I used my... Um, neck light and did it that way and here it is it's a tutorial by um ophelia talks it's her zigzag blanket she shows you how to straighten the top and put it on and i had all these blue yarns in eight ply in a box and this is what i used with this that's actually not white or cream it's a peachy color and it does look quite nice i did a bigger border than I thought I should look the charity I'm giving it to doesn't want them too big and this will be the perfect size but I actually finished a charity blanket and it looks really good with all the colors even if I do say so myself so that was all my finished objects one whip I never show a whip but I had to because I, I think it'll be in the mail and I'll probably forget to photograph it I won't be a sec so pretty much that's it for my crafting for March. Things I didn't show you, things I finished at the last minute, laughs I had. But I thought I'd share with you an Easter laugh um, if you celebrate Easter. So whenever thing goes to the shop, it'll always say to me, is this something you want me to get? And I'll think, and I, if I don't know anything, I usually say, bring me back a million dollars. And he goes, all right, yeah, and laughs. 
So come Easter Sunday, he gives me an Easter present. And guess what he gives me? He gives me a million dollars. A million dollar bar of chocolate. He said, there you go. Now you can't ask for a million dollars from the shop anymore. He got it in a specialty sweet lolly shop, we call them, in the arcade in the city. It's Barton's Million Dollar Bar Creamy Milk Chocolate. And it's got the Statue of Liberty on it. So Reeves said to me, well, you'll have to save that till you go to the USA because you can't spend that here unless you cash it in. But yes. Thing thought he was extremely funny giving me a million dollar bar of chocolate. So yeah, we still have laughs even at our age and however long we've been together. But that was nice. Um, what else is there? Well, I, I did come home from work today. I've had a really tough day at work as in I, I'm a decision maker. It's either I make a decision rightly or wrongly and since the middle of the last week, I've been trying to get a decision from people and I, I came home frustrated today because I couldn't get a definite yes or no and it, it drives me insane. But then I sat down as per usual when I walk through the door, Thing makes me a cup of tea and sometimes I chill out to a bit of YouTube videos catching up on people I like to watch. And I, ha I really wanted to watch the March edition of Who Wins Hooker versus Hooker. And watch the girls in that and I caught it I'd missed it because I was at work when it was on but I watched the replay and honestly you need to watch the replay on hooker versus hooker and who wins the March challenge I laugh so much my ribs are sore my cheeks bones are sore this is probably one of the best videos I've watched so far this year I challenge you to watch it Give it a thumbs up and tell me if you don't find it funny. Leave a com Come back and leave a comment. I watched that video. Oh, Judy, it is so funny. You have to watch it. Honestly, I always get a good laugh with these girls, but this is absolutely hilarious. So make sure you go and check it out. Now, don't forget, all the patterns and links I have used will be in the description below. Make sure you check out Alice at Soxy Nana. She does amazing craft. I'm really in awe of her, her talent with knitting. I watched her today too and she had finished a pair of socks for her husband Walter. And I'm not a sock maker but she actually got me thinking they are really nice. Maybe I need to make another pair of socks and have another go. And that's the beauty of watching YouTube videos. They inspire you. They make you feel good. Not always but most times. And you can always have a laugh. So stay safe, stay well. And in the, the words of my friend Madonna Ballard, laugh, laugh, laugh because life is too short. Bye for now.